A nice 1% pop here on the S&P, 25 on the Nasdaq, almost 4 on the chip index. Let's get to Bob Pisani. Hey, Bob. Yeah, we talked yesterday about mean reversion. That's happening again today. So the two sectors that have had the biggest correction, which is China and semiconductor slash technology, are the ones bouncing today as we try to get a little stability in interest rates. And that's where the debate is. Do we go to 2% on the 10-year or not? Right now, we're hovering in the 1.5%. Uh, area. Markets are happy with that. So you see semiconductors, there's the SMH, and China. Both of these have had the biggest corrections because higher rates have impacted emerging markets as well. And what's the big emerging sectors this year? Banks and energy. They're the weak group along with industrials. That's essentially the reflation trade, which today is taking a backseat to technology and China, which have been, of course, the big laggards. But the a lot of the damage is done. Okay, if you look at the big cap tech names, we're getting some bounces in the stuff that's been beaten up the most. And I'm talking about uh, Apple, which was down 17, 18 percent. AMD, Xilinx, NVIDIA, they were down more than 20 percent. PayPal and some of the other, let's call them software names, also were in pretty deep correction territory. You get a bounce today. But my point is a lot of damage has been done. And this is good and bad news. If you take a look at uh, how some of these semiconductor stocks have been correcting in the last couple of weeks since the highs mid-February, Teradyne, Xilinx, NVIDIA, Microchip uh, Technologies, we're talking about 20% declines in this group. The same with the software sector. Again, the valuations were really high. Uh, and when you have uh, interest rates move up, it reduces the present value uh, of the cash flow of these companies rather noticeably. So you get PayPal, Paycom, some of these big software companies like Adobe, I call Adobe a software company, all down more than 20%. So a lot of damage has been done. So here's the good news. The P.E. ratios, the multiples have dropped dramatically since the middle of February. Now, I know this sounds like high multiples. The S&P is 21, 22 times forward numbers. But this is nothing. Qualcomm was, was in the mid-30s a month ago. Xilinx was in the 70s a month ago. NVIDIA was much higher. Teradyne was not... not twice as much, but notably higher. Uh, I don't know if you want to call them cheap or not. I'll let an analyst make that decision. But these are at levels that are much more attractive than they were uh, a, a month ago. And I'm sure you're going to get some analysts coming out no making note of that in the next couple of days if these kinds of numbers uh, hold up uh, and we don't have the dramatic swing up in prices, again, that will lower the multiples. Meantime, remember the higher interest rates had done a lot of damage to emerging markets. Uh, since mid-February, again, we've seen some notable moves to the downside. China is already down, notably. There's the CSI 300, which is I call it the S&P 500 of China. That's 16 percent off of its highs. Emerging market ETF at 10 percent. The Philippines, South Korea, Brazil. You can go down the list and look at all the emerging market economies. They're all down not far from 10 percent. Meantime, Europe is having the same moment the United States is having. We're getting a big cap rally. It's a lot of new highs out there in the insurance names like AXA uh, and some of the big bank names, in the material names like BASF. That's one of the biggest chemical companies in the world. That's at a new high. The auto companies, just like in the U.S., Daimler, BMW are at 52-week highs. The oil companies, Total, any the big Italian uh, uh, um, uh, oil company has had a new high. So Europe, uh, Morgan, is having the same moment that the United States is having. Uh, new highs in all of the reopening names, even though European reopening is not quite proceeding nearly as fast as the U.S. reopening. Morgan, back to you. That's right. But it is still proceeding. I'd also just note with the gain we're seeing in the Nasdaq composite today, we're actually now positive, albeit barely, on the year now. Bob Pisani, thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.